We're going to talk about, um, in this video, the process of glycolysis related to cellular respiration. So really, glycolysis means we are going to be splitting the sugar. All right? That's literally what this word translates to. When you see glyco, you think sugar. Lysis, something's coming apart. All right? So in terms of glycolysis, we're going to take that sugar, that C6H12O6, and what's going to happen, there are going to be a series of enzymatic steps that are going to break that sugar down into a smaller molecule. All right? I kind of differ from some of my colleagues in that I don't think it's critical that you memorize every single um, enzyme that's responsible for breaking sugar down into pyruvate, because that's what you're going to generate. All right. Um, you may also see this in your book as pyruvic acid, either one of those are fine to use, okay? But what I do want you to be aware of, all right, there are a lot of enzymes that are necessary for that sugar to be split into pyruvate, all right? And essentially what we're doing with that sugar, I'm going to draw this as just round balls. All right. Each of these round balls represents a carbon. All right. So with sugar, you've got a six carbon molecule. What's going to happen with those enzymatic steps? They're going to break the bonds between those sugars. And they're going to generate two three carbon molecules. So we're going to start out with six carbons. And we're going to break those six carbons into three carbons. Those three carbon molecules are your pyruvate, or your pyruvic acid. Okay. In the process of doing this, you are going to generate a little bit of ATP. All right. But what I want you to keep in mind here, the ATP that's generated, the two ATP, um, are net. Because in order to get that carbon, uh, six carbon molecule split, you need to invest some energy. You need to invest some ATP. So you need to put in two ATP to split that six carbon molecule into the two carbon chain. Out of the process, you will generate four total ATP in glycolysis. But because you had to put two in, it's kind of like investment. If you put two dollars in to make four dollars, you ended up gaining two dollars. And that's worth doing, right? Same thing with generating ATP within the cell. A little bit of ATP goes in, we get a little bit more out. So net out of this process, we're gaining two ATP, all right? We are also going to, in terms of um, glycolysis, then generate um, some other products. That other product that we're going to generate is going to be NADH. All right. That NADH is going to become important to the electron transport chain. Because essentially what that electron, or what that NADH is, those are going to be the electrons that are going to start um, fueling our electron transport chain when we get to that. All right? So we generate a little bit of NADH out of this and a little bit of ATP. All right? So we go from our six carbon sugar to our two, three carbon pyruvate. We've got another step that's going to happen here. That pyruvate is going to be further broken down. Now, in terms of that, 
one of the products you're going to generate as part of this is going to be some carbon dioxide, okay? Because we're going to go from that three carbon chain now to a two carbon chain, all right? That two carbon chain is going to be what's going to start our Krebs cycle, all right? And that two carbon chain is going to be our acetyl CoA, all right? And the CoA stands for coenzyme A because attached to those two carbons, you're going to have a coenzyme that's going to be tagged onto it. All right, so that's how the name comes about. The CoA comes from the um, coenzyme that's attached, all right? The two carbons are going to be the acetyl group associated with this. So in terms of that process, all right, we're going to generate some carbon dioxide. We'll put it, that coming off here, all right, because that's going to be one of the products made, all right? And we're also going to have some NADH that's made here as well, all right? So in terms of glycolysis, really the function and the point of glycolysis is going to be generating that acetyl-CoA. And that acetyl-CoA is going to hang out there in the cytoplasm. And it's going to be that molecule that's going to start our Krebs cycle. All right. And in terms of that, I'm going to uh, stop here because this kind of gets to what happens in glycolysis. And I'm going to pick up with the next video on the Krebs cycle. All right. So the point of glycolysis is to generate the product we need to start the Krebs cycle. We get some other good stuff out of it as well. We get the little bit of ATP, we get some NADH, which is going to help our electron transport chain. And this is going to be one point in our process where we're going to generate some carbon dioxide. Okay? Because remember when I put up that equation for cellular respiration, we're breaking things down into carbon dioxide and water. This is where that carbon dioxide comes from, or one place that it will. The rest of our carbon dioxide is going to be generated in the Krebs cycle, and we're going to talk about that next. Thank you for your